My name is Annie Salzberger, and I have been a historical researcher for film and television for nearly two decades. Um, I'm currently uh, about to finish a 10 year stint as the head of research for The Crown on Netflix. And Tomas reached out actually to the head of the production company that I've been freelancing with for nearly 13, 14 years on various projects and just wondered if I'd be interested in speaking about what it is to, you know, come, <laughs> to do historical research, how significant it is for the writing process and the production process. And, and that's how I ended up here. We are not historians of that field. It's our job to become experts in any subject that you hire me to do. So previously I worked on a counterterrorism show. I, I'm working right now on a show about World War II and, and the, the birth of the special relationship with the Americans. Um, all of these things are, were new to me. Um, certainly the monarchy was new to me. And um, and it's it's just our it's our role and responsibility to get read up as quickly as possible to then be able to sort of lead the charge from the historical perspective. So all of the people I've hired over the years for the Crown, and there have been about ten. I'm just left with five because many leave after a couple of seasons. Um, just came in with either his history backgrounds from university, or they had worked in documentaries or maybe even did literature. I'm working with someone right now who never completed her degree and went straight into production coordinating um, in Jordan actually. So it really, it, it just, there is no single pathway in. What was impressive to me, what I always set um, potential employees within the, the research department was an assignment to take a really boring eight page document about an incredibly labyrinthine and very boring moment in history, but we needed to know about it for an episode and, and give it to me in a two pager that's punchy and it makes me want to actually put this on the screen. And whoever could do that made it to the next round. And then it was from that point on, it was all about the ability to collaborate. So whilst everyone has ended up with little specialties, often because you were the researcher on call that day when Peter needed specific information. So for series one, I became the, the, the expert on horses and horse breeding. And that lasted my entire time on the crown. I did not want that expertise. I did not want to be the expert on horse breeding and horse racing, but I was the person on call that day. So we've ended up with these specialties partially just because of how, how it works um, in the writing process. And then we do have some people who were hired for either their Arabic language when we decided to do Muhammad al-Fayed, or, um, I mean, in one case, I hired a, a very young woman who's been with me since this moment to work on series four intentionally because she was too young to care about Princess Diana. I didn't want anyone coming in saying things like she was the people's princess or you know, coming up with conspiracies about her death. I, I just wanted no one uh, on the team who really had pre preconceived notions about these individuals. So she had a great background in art history. She was she wrote really well. And I just thought, great, you're going to come in completely neutral about these people. And you're going to give me far better information and, and present it in a far more interesting way than someone coming in slightly older with, unfortunately, kind of tainted mind from all of the news media of the 90s. So my big, I think, I guess, suppose demand as a manager is that you have to be comfortable in both individual work and collaborative work. And you have to know how to shift how you approach the work going between the two. I, you know, cause there will be days where people are on holiday and you need to be able to do whatever is demanded of you. If a director calls one day and says, I wanna add this to the script, um, and to the scene, what do you think? You need to be able to feel confident that you can alone provide that information and pitch it in a way that's interesting and that you know is in the kind of lexicon of our show. But collaboratively, we will get you know research requests at three o'clock in the afternoon, and those requests have to be completed by six o'clock and sent back to Peter to work on the next morning. So sometimes we will start a Google document on a new request that's four people at one time, and someone will take newspapers, someone will take books someone will watch all the archive we have available and so on and then one person might be sifting through making sure that it has the the kind of editorial storytelling slant that we want so it's incredibly collaborative partially because of these often sort of knee-jerk moments that we have to respond to and then there are times where 
Um, it makes sense to have two people on a really difficult issue. So constitutional issues are so labyrinthine that we we often would have would pair people up to manage them um, because they needed to be able to brainstorm and, and try to really sort of dissect the liturgy uh, and the changes that that Prince Charles made over the years. You know, for example, to get Camilla uh, to marry him, he had to make quite a few changes to the Church of England liturgy and um, and and rules about marrying divorced individuals. So in order to really understand that, it's nice to have a partner to say, I think this is what this means. What do you think? So um, I really let the team, um, there, there are moments where I have to say, everyone has to work on separate things because we have a deadline today. And then there are moments where I'm saying, however you feel best to work today, um, if you want to partner up with one or two, great, give it a go, you know, as long as you meet the deadline. My team is mostly English because you have to find people who live in the country and um, and and right now with Brexit, it can be hard uh, finding others, but um, they all have very different backgrounds. And for example, uh, Anna Cardin, who I hired, has spent some time in America. She speaks fluent Arabic um, and yet she you know, was born and raised in England. And and that is what she was able to bring partially is to be able to read sources in Arabic or speak to our actors in Arabic and so on. Um, but for series five and six, because we were going to focus so much on the, the Fayed family, I intentionally went out and, and searched for someone who could bring this a bit more of the culture. And someone was just recommended to me by an old colleague. Her name is Nada Ate. And she, um, and the old colleague just said, this, this woman is amazing. She's, I've worked with her in Jordan on all these huge films like Star Wars and, and you know, those sorts of, very high budget films. She's a production coordinator. She is never flustered, ever. And I think, and she really wants to go into research. And I think it'd be great. Can you do an informational? And on that informational, I just was like, you're hired. I I, I adored her tenacity. She was clearly someone who just like researched in her free time. She just loved going down those sort of rabbit holes. She really wanted that chance to do something different. And she obviously spoke Arabic. She was Jordanian. So she wasn't our consultant on series five and six, because we wanted an Egyptian consultant, but she still was able to, you know, fluently communicate with, with various people uh, in Egypt, uh, in Arabic. So she has been an extraordinary addition to our team. I, I'm very sad to not be able to continue working with her. I hope we get to, but she's, you know, just has research in her blood, you can tell. So um, yeah, it's, some people had different backgrounds, but we didn't have that many nationalities. Involved. I mean, I'm American. That was the big, I suppose, nationality difference. My the the script producer, who's the other head of the editorial side, is Irish, um, and I have to say that made the Crown better because every time Peter assumes that certain events or moments in the lives of the royals were known, were well known, and maybe I shouldn't touch it because it's too well known. You know, Una and I could raise our hands and be like, we had never heard of this. Uh, that went for Abervan, you know, he was, he knew so much about it. He was born in the sixties. He, um, he remembered this horrible tragedy and Una and I were like, this should have been known across the world. We would like to look at this, please. So we, we have had a few, you know, enough, I think, difference and variety to, to be able to second guess assumptions, I think, which is really important. And you have to research the person who's written the material that you're using as research. Know your journalists, know your authors, right? Know your documentarians if you're looking at film. You, because everybody has a background that could color, you know, how the, they report. Know the newspaper, you know? Um, make sure you understand that some are working to an audience and others have chosen to present kind of more objective news. And I think that's, I just think that's incredibly important. Um, and the other thing I'd say is no one stop because it's a rabbit hole. You can keep going and keep going and you really have to decide, you know, this is enough for me to now feel comfortable in the world and I can make decisions. I can, I understand the voices now. I understand the constraints of the time that they lived in. Um, I understand the dynamics. Now I'm just going to put it to the side and write. And you really knowing that moment to just say enough is enough. I'm good. Is really important. I, I I'm a massive fan of Twin Peaks. I think it's it is one of the most well written uh, shows. I mean, it went a little mad, but I I just think that the characters and the dynamics of that show are so unique. 
Um, I loved True Detective Series One. I think that was, I would have loved to have worked on that. I was of the age where I was in the industry and, you know, properly had a career. And I, and, and I just think from start to finish, it was so such a holistic endeavor. Every, they had pure control over every single moment in that, in that show. Um, and I'm also, I'm a big sci-fi nerd as well. Battlestar Galactica for me is probably one of the best just character work shows, you know, it's, it happens to be in space, but it's just really about challenges and human interaction and, um, and loss and grief, you know, all the sort of basic things that, that I really love, but I, I watch a lot on TV. I like a lot of TV. 